It's a new year and a new chance for you to make a fresh start with your compliance. Or we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. Welcome to day 31 of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program. This ends my January series on the things you need to do to have a more effective compliance program. I hope you've enjoyed the last 14 months when I've gone into uh, various topics of how to create, implement, and enhance a best practices compliance program. I will shortly be coming out with a new podcast series, which I focus on the nuts and bolts of compliance called the Compliance Handbook. So today's topic is Using a Root Cause Analysis for Remediation. The 2020 update reemphasized the need for performing a root cause analysis, but equally importantly, using it to remediate your compliance program. It stated a hallmark of a compliance program is working effectively in practice to the extent to which the company is able to conduct a thoughtful root cause analysis of any misconduct and timely and appropriately remediate to address the root causes. It went on to state what steps the company has taken that demonstrate recognition of the seriousness of the misconduct, acceptance of the responsibility of it, and the implementation of measures to reduce the risk of repetition of the misconduct, including measures to identify the future risks. You should begin with the question of who should perform the remediation. Should it be an investigator or uh, an investigative team which were part of the root cause analysis? Jonathan Marks believed the key is both independence and objectivity, It may be that an investigator or investigative team is a subject matter expert and therefore more qualified to get that particular recourse. Yet to perform the remediation, the key is to integrate the information developed from the root cause analysis into a solution. Marx further noted that the company may also have deficiencies in internal controls. More importantly, the failure to remediate gaps in internal controls provides the opportunity for additional errors or misconduct to occur. This could damage the company's credibility with the regulators, allowing the same or similar incident to reoccur. Finally, both the 2020 update and the FCPA corporate enforcement policy, the DOJ has added its voice to prior SEC statements that regulators will focus on what steps the company took upon learning of the misconduct, whether the company immediately stopped the misconduct, what new and effective internal controls or procedures the company has adopted or plans to adopt. As required under the 2020 update from the regulatory process, the critical element is how do you use the information you develop from a root cause analysis. Every time you see a problem as a CCO, you must perform a root cause analysis. Was something done or approved or not approved uh, before the untoward event happened? Was any harm done? Why or why not? Why did the system fail? Was it because the person who was doing the approval was too busy? Was it because they didn't understand? And answering these questions and other questions which should have been developed through a root cause analysis, you can bring real value and solutions to your compliance programs. The key is that after you have identified the causes of problems, consider the solutions that can be implemented by developing a logical approach using data that already exists in your organization. Identify current and future needs for the organization for improvement. Your solution should be a repeatable step-by-step process in which one process can confirm the results of another. Focus on the corrective measures of root cause is more effective than simply treating the symptoms of a problem or event, and you will have a much more robust solution in place. This is because the solutions are more effective when accomplished through a systemic process with conclusions backed up by the evidence. When you step back and consider what the DOJ was trying to accomplish with the 2020 update, it becomes clear the DOJ expects from the compliance professional this this type of approach. Consider the structure of your compliance program and how it interrelates to your company's risk profile. When you have a compliance failure, use the root cause analysis to think about how each of the structural elements of your compliance program would interact and impact how you manage and deal with the risks. So what are today's three key takeaways? Number one, objectivity and independence. Number two, the critical element is how did you use the information you developed in the root cause analysis? And number three, the key is that you identified the causes of problems and considered the solutions that can be implemented by developing a logical approach using data that already exists in your organization. 
So as I told you in the introduction to this podcast, I'm going to actually change the focus of this Nuts and Bolts series a little bit and move to a um, weekly series on the Compliance Handbook. This is in conjunction with the release of my Compliance Handbook 2nd Edition, which is being published by LexisNexis. I'll have more information on that, but it will be published in April, so I know it's something that you will want to uh, consider for your compliance library because having the most up-to-date handbook on compliance written by one author that literally explains the nuts and bolts of the design, creation, and implementation of a comp- compliance program is certainly something every compliance practitioner should have available to them. I've greatly enjoyed this 31 days series that I've run for the past 14 months, and I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you so much for listening to it. This is Tom Fox again. Thank you for listening to this episode of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program. I hope you will join me for the entire month of January, where I take a look at some of the significant changes in compliance and FCPA enforcement, which occurred in 2020 and will help inform your compliance program going forward into 2021 and indeed beyond. 